All right, I'm gonna try this for the third time. If, if this doesn't work, I'm not doing a video. So this GoPro is a piece of garbage, just like they all are. Uh, this one I bought used, and it was, they said it still worked, which it actually does work, but it doesn't work great. So this one freeze frames, just like the other one does. This one seems to overheat faster than the old ones did. So, I mean, just junk. The other problem it has is the gimbal sticks. So the camera's all shaky, like you're watching the original Blair Witch Project movie. So, golly. Anyway, trying to give an update on Steve's car here. So as you can see, there's a lot been put on the car. Uh, I've run into a lot of roadblocks here, so I've got a lot of stuff I need to, to finalize before we can start it. I want to start the car without the front fenders and stuff on it. And the reason is there's plenty of room to get in here and tweak things, you know, check for leaks and just pay attention and watch it for the 25 minutes that we're going to be breaking the camshaft in. So uh, anyway, I've got the core support hard mounted to the chassis. There's no rubber cushion under it. Because if you do put a rubber cushion under there, this thing will flop back and forth and your fan will get into your radiator. So I basically hard mounted that to the core support. So it's it's pretty stable. So all the heater hoses or the radiator hoses are on. Uh, Steve had to go get the canister for the lifter valley. Uh, Jim didn't bring that, so he had to go get it. So now I've got it bolted into the lifter valley. I've got the intake manifold on. The valve covers are on. The spark plugs are in. The headers are on. The plug wires are on the plugs, but I haven't put the distributor in yet because I want to prime the engine. So I've been working on mock-up for this and the throttle valve cable bracket, which is going to have to be modified. So that's going to have to come back off. Um, I've got the carburetor on there, but I don't have it bolted down yet. Uh, it, it's just a lot of little finishing stuff I've got to do because some things have changed since before when we got it running in his shop. Some of the stuff we did, it wasn't that great of work, you know, and we were trying to use stuff that he had laying around on a table and some of the stuff was, wasn't nice. So this go around, everything's got to be nice because, you know, I mean, look at it, you know what I mean? <laughs> you don't want to stop now. Um, I've got the alternator adjusted, the belt's tight, uh, the alternator's wired up. All this stuff that's left is is just the uh, like the headlights and turn channels and horn and stuff, but uh, I mean it's going good, man. Um, so I'm, I've run into some roadblocks, so I'll run you through some of that. So one of the problems I've ran into it's not really a problem, but this is the way the car was set up before when it just had a mechanical gauge. So now uh, he's got the classic instruments full instrumentation instrument cluster, and it's all electric sending units. So this is how I had set it up when I was working on it at his house. And it has this painted steel tube on it. And it'll screw into the back of the block back here, uh, which the, co the coil's gonna have to come back off, but I've just got it on there for mock-up right now. And that's about how, the, how it was set up before. And it was clear of the throttle bracket stuff. But that is a painted uh, steel tube. So, and it looks like crap. So I dug through my stuff here and I found a, a brass tube here, but it's not as long. So I'm going to remove this from that piece and I'm going to screw that in there and I'm going to try to see if that will work uh, and, and use that and not have to go down and try to buy a part. So I've got that going on. So I had him get a phenolic carb spacer. So this is a quarter inch phenolic carb spacer and this is a must if you're going to be using ethanol unleaded fuel. Uh, the reason is here in Oklahoma, when it gets 90 and 100 degree temps outside, the intake and the carburetor heats up and because your fan is basically blowing all your hot air right on the carburetor so uh, i mean you're going to get fuel boil vapor lock you know percolation that type of stuff so anyway if you put a phenolic carb spacer on there it insulates the intake from the hot intake from the carburetor and it will dead stop fuel boil percolation and vapor lock issues i know that for a fact because i've done it I had a car that stalled on me driving in the road. It just shut off because it started boiling in the bowl and just flooded out the Holly carburetor. So after it cooled down, it started right up and run fine. So I put a phenolic carb spacer on. I never had that problem again. So I put them on every time I build a car. They're like $25. Uh, I had a buddy over here the other day, and he's like, yeah, but I don't, I don't have to worry about it because I, I buy non-ethanol unleaded. 
And I was like, oh, well, good for you. I wouldn't go on power tour because if you go on a, a power tour and you're out of state or out of town or whatever, you might go to a gas station that maybe they don't have non-ethanol unleaded, if you didn't think of that. So, and the other thing, the gas station right up here that I go to, I have to run 91 octane because of my compression ratio on my car. Uh, they don't have non-ethanol 91. They have non-ethanol 87 octane. So I run ethanol and all my stuff. It does, I don't have any issues with it. So there's nothing wrong with it. Um, anyway, so it's a good idea to get a phenolic carb spacer. Uh, you know, especially if you have hot temperatures in the summer, it'll just, I don't ever notice it in the winter time or I didn't in the car that when I built it that time. And then when the summertime heat hit, that's when it stalled on me on the side of the road. And I pulled the air cleaner off and it was just boiling out of the vent tube down into the carburetor. So it was basically flooding itself out. Um, so anyway, uh, transmission lines are hooked up to the radiator. The hoses are on. I mean, this thing is getting close, man. I've just, I've got a few roadblocks that's, that's happening here. So I had him get this fuel line piece. It's an Edelbrock unit that come with the Edelbrock filter. And then this is a separate Edelbrock piece. This is a braided uh, fuel hose, really nice stainless steel braided. And it says on summits listing for that and on the package that it's for block mounted Chevy fuel pump. Problem is it must be for Edelbrock's fuel pump or maybe a Holly. It doesn't fit a stock over the counter replacement O'Reilly's fuel pump because that's inverted flare. This is the fitting that came on it. It doesn't fit in there. So I had to get on eBay and I bought that fitting and that fitting is stupid priced. All those fittings are. So I'm waiting on that. I think it's going to be here Tuesday. Uh, let's see, I went ahead and I put a plug in the intake right here. These are stainless steel plugs that I had here. I put a stainless plug in here and I took the heater hose fitting out of the water pump that came in it and I put a stainless steel plug in there. The reason is he's not sure when he's going to do vintage air and when the, the shop painted the car, when they did the work on it, they welded up the heater hose outlets. So that's where the core support tubes would come through the firewall so he doesn't have that. The only thing they left is where the blower motor comes through and the studs for it, which if you buy a vintage air kit, that's all that stuff comes out of this hole. So anyway, I didn't want a looped radiator hose on there, or heater hose, because it's the way I did it before and it looked like crap. So I went ahead and put plugs in there. When he does get the vintage air kit, I can pull the plugs back out, put fittings back in there. So no big deal. Now, here's another problem I ran into. So all the cars that I have built... I mainly have messed with, I would say, mid to late 70s all the way up to the 1990s small block Chevys. I don't have any experience in these older blocks, like 60s and 50s model small blocks. I've never messed with them. I've never had a car that had one in there. So anyway, the problem I'm running into on this 64 model 327 is this old stock starter that weighs about 50 pounds or something. This thing is super heavy. I always run mini starters especially when I put headers on because they'd always seem to heat soak the starter. So hopefully this will work out okay on this car. Uh, he had had this rebuilt, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on there. But anyway, when I took the car apart, it had standard bolts in it, just a regular old bolt. And these aren't even long enough because the threads are further deeper down in the block. So this was only grabbing like four or five threads. So these are not going to work. So I spec'd out some actual starter bolts that have the knurling in here. So they came in, they don't go through the starter. Ain't that something? So any of you guys that have any experience with these older blocks, these older small blocks, do these starters just take a regular bolt or did they have a bolt that had knurling on it like that? I need to know. So I ended up going and getting a couple of grade eight bolts and they actually fit and they're the correct length for the starter. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and use to put it on for now. But if there is a starter bolt that has knurling for the top, that style of starter, that's what I want to get on there. But I'm kind of thinking that we may end up having to put a mini starter on it later. I just, we're just going to have to see. But anyway, so I need to get the starter on. So I started to run the battery cable and I forgot I broke my tap off in the frame when I was drilling and tapping the frame for those little plastic clamps for that uh, cable. Uh, so I went and got a new uh, tap and uh, I need to get in there and try to dig that one out. There's a little bit of it sticking out. I think I can get it out of there. I just haven't messed with it. But uh, let's see, the last time you've seen 
uh, on the video I did restore the uh, ice cooler to put the battery in it and I've got everything bolted down and tight and I got the battery cables run through the floor and I forgot the radio memory wire. All right, so the GoPro froze again. So I'm back out here to try to finish up where it stopped. So I've got the battery cables ran through uh, the floor and everything, but I forgot to hook up the radio memory wire. So this is a separate wire that I ran all the way to the radio. I'm gonna be putting an inline fuse right on the positive post on the battery. That way it is constantly hooked up to 12 volts even if the battery switch is cut off. So I'll put an inline fuse right at the terminal and that way if it shorts out anywhere between here and there, it'll pop and it won't you know, short out anything. Um, but anyway, I forgot to run that into, into there. So I've got to take this bolt back out and pull the stuff out, drill a hole in the rubber mat, drill a hole in the bottom of the, the thing and then put in a, a grommet to run that wire through there and then bolt it all back in. So more rework. And then I need to finish putting up my, I need to drill a hole in the frame rail down there so I can put a nut and a bolt and a star washer on it for the ground wire to go to the frame. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do a body to frame ground back here or if I'm going to do it up here. I just haven't decided yet. And I still need to ground the engine to the, to the chassis as well. So, or maybe firewall the engine is the way I had it before. This is, uh, this is the battery cable that was on it, and when they painted the engine, they just decided instead of taking the bolt out, they'd just paint cable and all. That's uh, some quality work right there, so I will not be reusing that. Let's make a new one. But that's pretty much where I'm at with Steve's car. It's just, uh, it, it's just this little finalizing stuff that always ends up biting me in the butt, man. And when you've got something going that's looking this awesome you can't start half-assing it. it it's got to be nicely done so you know a lot of time a lot of effort goes into it and yeah i don't want to forget this <laughs> almost forgot about this uh, actually real quick so i did have in my shed the correct right hand window piece track piece for the door because this has a left hand piece in it which is not correct so i blasted this and painted it before I blasted it and painted it, I actually welded this back together. They had it brazed. This is in the correct spot on here, uh, but they had some brazing on there, and I went ahead and put MIG welds in between. Uh, but anyway, I blasted it and painted it, and then I put the the uh, glass setting channel back in. It's original, but it'll still hold the glass. So anyway, I need to swap that out. But anyway, what I was getting ready to talk about was this stupid universal floor shifter from Locar. So this is what we put in the car before when I was working on it at Steve's house. And that was before I found out that the transmission was too down, down too far. So now that the transmission's up where it's supposed to be in the car with the correct degree of angle, uh, the linkage won't go through the car because it's hitting the transmission. So I've got to raise the shifter up. So I'm going to have to end up building a stand uh, about an inch thick coming up to get the shifter up in the air an inch. Um, and then this is the, the low car shift boot set right here. And when you put this on there, that's an issue. So this won't go down flat on the tunnel because these brackets are supposed to be turned around the other way. So like this one needs to be here and that one needs to be here. That way the bolts are on the inside of the shifter instead of the outside. So this won't even go on there until that's all turned around. So I've decided I'm just going to make a pull these brackets off and flip them around and then I'm going to make a basically a raised up one inch thick base but it will be the exact dimensions of the outside of this with the curve and everything that way uh, when the carpet kits put in the car we can take a piece of the carpet and spray glue it to that I'll seam it put the seam at the front but it'll spray be spray glued around so it'll match the carpet will match and everything on that little raised section and then this can go down on top of it but it'll be even with it on the side so I don't have to worry about upholstering the top of it. You know what I mean? But that will raise up the shifter so I can get the linkage on and then it should look pretty good after that. So I've got to do some cutting and welding and all kinds of crap in here again, which means I have to pull the cross member back out of the car and lower the transmission down a little bit to get to all this stuff. So more fun, I tell you. <clears throat> I think that's about it, guys. I think that's... Uh, that's a pretty good update of stuff of what's going on. Uh, this this GoPro issue is really 
a problem. It uh, sometimes I turn the GoPro on, and I start videoing, and it's right out of the gate. It's it's froze. So it just it's kind of hit and miss whether it's good or not. So I'm gonna have to figure out something on a camera. But anyway, that's an update on Steve's car. Thanks for watching.